The Chinese automotive industry has seen truly unprecedented growth in the last three decades. For the largest part of the 20th century, China was mostly building military vehicles or trucks. As late as 1985, there were just 5,200 passenger cars built in China, and even though there were imports from the Soviet Union, Japan, and other countries, private ownership of vehicles was almost non-existent, partly due to the socialist policies and partly due to the high import duties. In the 1980s, a number of Western companies, including AMC, Volkswagen, and Peugeot, started building cars in China through joint ventures with local companies. In the 1990s the industry really took off, with a number of big players emerging, such as BYD Auto, Brilliance China Auto Vigili, and Great Wall Motors. One factor that helped boost the Chinese automotive industry was the fact that producers didn't really bother with research and development, choosing instead to copy the design of Western cars and offering them at much lower prices. In this way, there are Chinese cars that share so many similarities with Western counterparts that it's sometimes hard to distinguish them, and a more detailed look is required to spot the differences. But now, China is moving from imitation to innovation. China's own brands are developing so rapidly, but we don't seem to feel anything, and there are even many people who look down on Chinese-made cars. Why is this? I think mainly for three reasons, which I am going to get to later. So, what is the current development of Chinese domestic cars? When will it be impressive? Hi, welcome to Auto Age. Before we started today's video, please subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell. Okay, let's get started. Why do Chinese cars have achieved such dazzling achievements? and many people still look down on Chinese-made cars. I think there are three reasons. First, judging from the current market situation, although the export volume of Chinese automobiles is high, the export gold content is relatively low. A large part of the exported automobiles are not China's own brands, but are only automobiles made in China. Taking the Tesla factory in Shanghai as an example, the Tesla cars produced in this factory will also be counted as cars exported from China after they are sold to other countries, but a larger part of the profits are pocketed by Musk. Besides, Tesla is still a wholly foreign-owned enterprise, so there is nothing left except taxes and jobs. Second, although the export volume of Chinese cars is so high that it may even surpass Germany, we should pay attention to the fact that German cars have already made money without exporting them. Because they have joint venture factories in China, such as China First Auto Works Volkswagen, Shanghai Automotive Industry Volkswagen, BMW Brilliance, and Beijing Benz. According to data, in the first half of this year, China First Auto Works Volkswagen sold 504,659 vehicles, SAIC Volkswagen sold 510,609 vehicles, BMW Brilliance sold 306,837 vehicles, and Beijing Benz sold 266,464 vehicles. If these sales are counted as imported cars from Germany, then this sales data is really enviable. Third, cars for export sales are still dominated by developing countries. Since Chinese cars are still the main cost-effective route in overseas markets, most of the countries where they are sold are also developing countries. For example, in Chile, in the first half of 2018, Chinese cars occupied the top sales in the Chilean market. Although Chile is not a poor country, its local auto industry is relatively backward. It is also because the local auto industry is relatively backward. The zero-tariff policy is implemented here, bringing together more than 60 car brands from all over the world. Chinese cars rely on high-cost performance and are very popular here, especially Cherry cars, even more popular than Toyota. Cherry has sold 24,000 vehicles in Chile in 2021, accounting for 5.9% of the market, while Toyota was only have 5.7%. 
However, in my opinion, although the gold content of Chinese automobile exports is low, the development speed should not be underestimated. In 2001, China's auto export volume was only 20,000 vehicles, which has increased by 100 times in 20 years. I believe that this growth rate is enough to make many countries daunted. At the same time, the hard work of the industrious Chinese people in various industrial chains is also accelerating the development of Chinese-made automobiles. Musk has praised Chinese employees they take the initiative to work overtime until 3 a.m., and the workers are even willing to live in the factory, but this is impossible in Germany. No way. Of course, many people are calling Musk an unscrupulous capitalist. We put aside whether Musk's values are correct, there is a seemingly universal understanding. Chinese people seem to be naturally more industrious than foreigners. Why? In European and American cultures, individual interests are more emphasized, and Chinese culture is more emphasis on collective dedication. The collective emphasized here is as small as the family and as large as the country. For example, in Chinese culture from ancient times to the present, parents and children are part of the same family from birth to death. Therefore, in addition to earning enough for themselves, Chinese people always want to do more and save more money for their children and family members. Some viewers may be dissatisfied when they heard what I said, and they would argue that, it's not that the West doesn't care about their families, it's that their welfare is good, and the Chinese have no choice but to save money to support their children and the elderly. Objectively speaking, the welfare of Western workers is much better than that in China, we have to admit this. However, this is another essential reason why the Chinese are industrious. The qualitative change of things is a process of continuous evolution, and the difference in the development stage creates the essential difference. The capitalist powers entered the industrial society hundreds of years earlier than China. When China first opened its eyes to see the world, they completed the primitive accumulation of capital through colonization. In 2000, when China entered the WTO and wanted to do business with them, the division of labor in the industrial chain in the West had already been completed, and China could only accept the positions they arranged foundries, cutting-edge technology and high-end industries that basically had nothing to do with China. The old capitalist countries in Europe and the United States have harvested the whole world by relying on the division of labor in the industrial chain so as to provide their workers with complete welfare benefits. And China is at the bottom of the industrial chain, earning the least money, and there are more than a billion mouths waiting to be fed. So, how should China break through? The answer is that you can only rely on yourself to work hard and grab it from others. How? First, the hard-working quality of the Chinese people still needs to be maintained and carried forward. This is the internal driving force that supports the rejuvenation of China and its industry. There is no pie in the sky. Just like Sri Lanka, which has declared bankruptcy, Sri Lanka was still a leader among developing countries in the early days. They could have used their rich natural resources to develop planting and export trade, and then drive other industries. However, when income and creativity are relatively low, and they have not built a good internal circulation, they completely rely on external borrowing and promote a large number of social welfare that is out of line with the actual development level of the country. Its own industrial transformation has not been realized, and there are too many grand plans that are out of reality, which will eventually lead to the collapse of a country's finances. All in all, no one is born to be diligent, but diligence and reasonable distribution are indeed the starting point to realize a good life. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you so much for your continuous support. Your precious time with us is highly appreciated. See you.